I was pressing buttons. Oh, the silo, silo, the flipper, flipping them deals. What up? What up with your bro? So you're working on a deal, I see, huh? Deals to pay those bills. For those who don't know, my name is Chris Monroe, the student master teacher, Mr. I Stay Woke. Peace within for TLC. Is that like TLC, like t Boz, Left Eye, and Chili? Is that what that is? Or Tender Love and Care? What's the TLC stand for? Or is it just your initials? Tanya, Lorraine, something. All right, let's see what we got here. We got a live request coming in from the silo. The uh, on time. That's what it's all about. Can you provide value? Let's see if we can provide some value. What's up, bro? Hey, what's going on? What up? What up? You say you're working on you a deal, huh? Yeah. Um, I actually been been doing wholesaling. Um, I kind of took a break on that because, as you know, every deal is not a wholesale deal. And kind of excuse the glare. I'm trying to catch you. I got a crack on my light in the front, so I'm trying to catch that right. But, yeah, every deal is not a wholesale deal, so I kind of been studying on the creative side as far as trying to help any situation out. So with this um, actual lead, it was actually a referral from a previous lady that I had worked with. Her brother, basically like a, a bird dog deal, he on Trent, referred me to this guy. He did a full rehab on the property, but it has a, a $30,000 tax lien on it. Yeah. I'm paying it. <laughs> exactly. So um, he was trying to sell it for 160 then he went down to 120 So basically, he's trying to walk away with 100000 I already know that's not going to work. Um, I talked to him yesterday. I went and seen the property. Um, he said that he was renting out before and it was for like nine months. Then they end up moving out and now he just did the full rehab and now he's just trying to get up from up under it. He is open to doing terms. So that's why I was trying to reach out to you because I just started watching you like two weeks ago. And oh, okay. I, I pretty much like your content and, and how you pretty much do things. I'm following you on uh, in here and on your YouTube. So I kind of like how you handle things or whatnot. And I've tried a little bit how you talk to the sellers. I've tried it too. And it actually works as far as opening them up on terms. So I just yeah. want to reach out to you to kind of just see uh, what do you think on the deal or, or what do you think I should do or what's my next step? Yeah, yeah. So does he owe anything on this house? Um, no, it's free. And I just asked him, did he have a mortgage? He said uh, he don't have a mortgage, just that tax that's on it. And he's paying monthly on, I just got that information too. He's paying monthly 900 a month on it. On a tax bill? Yeah. Oh, so they gave him a payment arrangement. Right. And oh, okay. I know the rent in that area is around like 1400 so what is it that the guy really wants? Is it more so he just want to get rid of the house or he don't want to have to keep paying that $900 a month? Uh, when I talk to him, it's basically, he said he's in it 85. So I'm guessing he's trying to get that out because what he, he said he's an investor and he's pretty much buying lots and building from the ground up. So, so does he need that? So that's what I'm trying to distinguish. He, he, so he actually needs to get rid of that property, or is it more so he don't want to keep paying out that money that he don't need to be paying? That's the biggest pain. He want to get rid of. He want to get rid of the property and pretty much try to take that money and take it to what else he's doing. And so he's about eighty five in. He wants one twenty. What's the ARV? The after repaired value is supposed to be. The ARV is around like one sixty, one forty five at the lowest in between y'all. Oh, okay. So, I mean, he got a little equity. So, I mean, so he said he would consider taking uh, some type of terms creative deal with you, right? Right. Because I told him so, we pretty much work on both sides. I, I hit him with your line. We pretty much work on both sides of the deal where we have people that's wanting to sell and we have people that's begging to buy a house, just need a little bit more time with their credit. So I hit him with that and he was open to it. Cool, cool. So the next line I usually hit a person with right after that is, we usually buy with nothing down, okay? Right. 
Right, stop right there and let them say, okay. And then I ain't talking about the down payment no more after that. Now, if they do come back and say something like, oh, yeah, well, I, I don't know about that. I need something down. And then you say, well, what's the lowest you could take as far as a down payment? But my first position is always, we usually buy with nothing down, okay? okay. We're going to say, okay, all right, moving on. I ain't talking about down payment no more. I'm done with that conversation. Once I mentioned it once, I'm buying a house, no money down right there. That's a little nugget for you. Uh, moving on from there, uh, so if we're able to just take over that $900 a month payment for you, for a period of time and uh, get you the price you want, would you consider something like that? You could probably set it up that way where you can just take over that payment of 900 a month. Depending on uh, what could you rent it for? What is the rent rate around there about? Um, it's around 1400 Oh, okay. So easy money. I mean, you but can get the a buyer in there. The thing is that he did throw at me was if we were kind of open on the terms, he would go up on the price, which is kind of understandable, but he was actually trying to go to – the price where it's going for he wanted 150. I, I mean, mean I, I, know, I'm pretty, that, that, I, I can try to squeeze it to 160, like on the back end, go up to one extra 10,000. I don't know. I was wait, and where, where are you at again? I'm in Houston. So you're in Texas, so you can't do a lease option there. You can do one, but it got to be short term. Right, so you right. have to do something different. You would have to do a uh, either just like a seller finance type deal or something right. like that. Right, so that's different. what I was thinking and um, trying to go at them with. That's when I got the um, text. I just got through texting not too long ago, getting uh, um, trying to see what he was paying monthly for the taxes or how how was he paying it down or whatnot. And he just told me it's 900 a month. So and, that's what I'm trying to structure now, trying to see if I can do it on the finance. Right, right. So, so that's what I would position myself as well. If we were able to just take over that $900 a month payment for you, um, and uh, so you won't have to deal with it anymore. We take care of all the responsibility of the maintenance of the repairs of the house going forward. You don't get any calls from us about something being broken or, you know, uh, leaky faucets or anything. You don't have to deal with this house. No landlording on your behalf at all. All you do is collect that payment, and, you know, and it, and it pays off to your tax bill. Uh, would you consider something like that? And if you say, yeah, he'll do it, just do it that way. Even if he said, I'll take a 1000 a month, you know, that right. would be worth it because you know right. we can get you get a little spread on it because really the price isn't going to kill you. You're going to sell it for more than whatever you get it for anyway. Because even when you sell it, you want to put a bump in between what you got under contract for. So even if you had to get it from him for 160, you could sell it for 160, 175, or you need maybe even 180, maybe full ARB depending on what it needs. Does the house any need need any repairs or anything, or is it good enough? He just um the the uh, bird dog, Mr. Torrance. That's the name, Mr. Torrance, um, who referred me to him. He told me they just like just got finished wrapping it up like three days ago as far as with the repairs. Yeah, so I mean if it's a move in ready property, it's easy deal for you. All you gotta do is get it under contract, get a tenant buyer in there, man, get you a down payment. I mean, your down payment gonna be bigger than you probably would have got from a wholesale deal. That's what people don't know on these terms is you get a check on the front end the same way. Get the passive cash flow in the middle and a check on the back end if they cash out. But we don't know if they're gonna cash out. Most people don't. <laughs> Right. So um, he does know, like when I was opening, when um, I opened him up to the terms, he does know that we take over our responsibilities. I just told him the only thing he would just get is a monthly check. Yeah. So if would he, so I would start there. Would you consider just letting us take over that payment for that nine hundred dollars a month for you and just leave? Let it be. Let him say yes or no. If he say, well, yeah, I would consider that because I really don't want to keep paying it. Then you just lock it up and put it in the terms that, yeah, I wanted that nine hundred dollars a month. You know, for this period of time, and that's the other thing you have to figure out how long of a term you're gonna need. Right, that's what I was um, trying to figure out and uh, try to get an insight on you on so that the thing. So yeah, when it comes to that stuff, like I say, mostly ninety nine point nine percent of everything I do is a question. You ask that question to that seller. So what's the longest amount of time you think you know you're comfortable with? And they might say, well, oh, I really want a year. Oh, that's nah, kind of funny. I, I mean, I can't remember the last time we did less than 10 years. Yeah, I've got you. Okay, okay. Position. I'm, okay, got you. Position yourself. I don't remember the last time we did less than 10 years. You know, they're like, you know, you can haggle and try to get it. If you get five years out of it, it's good. To say five years at that $900 a month with a balloon, all of it due in full within five years, seven years, whatever you can negotiate. The longer amount of time you can get, the better. You know, I don't think you're going to give you that much time, but you don't know until you ask. Right. You know, because I had a deal like that where I had to create a deal with a guy. He we originally agreed to ten year balloon, meaning I pay you this uh seven fifty a month for ten year for ten year balloon payment. The meaning the whole thing is due in full within ten years. Uh and so he was like, Well, you know what? He came back and said, I just realized I'm like sixty some years old. I might not even live that long. You think we could do like five years? 
I said, hmm, how about we just meet in the middle and just do seven years? Is that fair? He's like, yeah, that's fair, seven years. I don't care. I might have two or three tenant buyers through that house between that time. And I bought this house, no money down, for $1,239 in closing costs only. I mean, many of them, how many houses could you buy for 1200 bucks? Oh, not too many. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Right. So you can't lose. The only way you lose is not play. And then what's half a zero? <laughs> half a zero is still zero. So get, exactly. get it locked up. I don't have no money, so yeah. So your main goal when you're speaking to him is try to get it little or nothing down if possible. Nothing down is usually how we buy, like I said earlier. Uh, then figure out if you can just take over that $900 a month payment. And if you say, yeah, that's cool. And then about how long you think, how much time do you think we can get? Or how much time would you feel comfortable with? Just see his temperature. And he might say, well, you know, I really want two years or one year or, you know, some low number. Well, I can't remember the last time we did less than 10 years. But, you know, we might be able to make an exception. You know, you could you could try to position yourself to try to get as much time as possible. You know, I mean, we may be able to do something a little better. I mean, we want to, you know, we want to really get a good person in here that's actually going to cash it out. You know, so if you got to get them to that conversation. Because that's yeah. where we make our money. That's your line, too, I got from yeah, We make our money on the back end. So it's not going to cost you any money. We're going to front everything on the front end anyway. You don't have to worry about it. And we typically pay the closing costs on these deals as well. So you come out of pocket for no money. Right, right, right. So, you know, and you can have your house sold pretty quickly. You know what I mean? You, do you have the capability of closing that up quickly or something like that? Or, um, Yeah. I um, don't think I have to do is just put out. But I normally do is uh, put out banding signs, uh, rent to own. And I just put my number and I'll try it that now. Get at least by six or seven calls a week. So, yeah, not necessarily your marketing. I'm talking about for you to take down a deal. Would you take it down? First, or would you wait till you get an end buyer and try to take it down, double close, something like I'll that? I'll take it down first because, like I said, I've tried it with the bandit signs, and I see it work. So I'll try it like that. And, if, and like I say, he pretty much seemed like he pretty much open. If I were to try to extend it, he'll be open to it because, like I say, he don't want to pay that, that tax sound like. He just want to get, get up under it. So these type of people, that's why I say skid marks to the closing table. If he's ready to agree to everything we just talked about, say even if you got to give a little bit, say you got to pay a thousand a month, whatever, you getting fourteen, fifteen, sixteen hundred a month on the uh, you know on your extra strategy, you you roll it like that, and so that uh basically no matter what happens, you're gonna win for real. Right, and another thing, secure that deal. and another thing, um, his credit is not all that good, and he's looking to get into a property and he was trying to see if I can help him with his credit and get him into a property. He wanted to be in the area of Katy, Cypress and spring. And he said he was looking in the range from 300 to 400,000. And um, I asked him what, I didn't ask him uh, what's the lease that he had. I just said, how much do you have down? He said he had around 30 to 40,000. So I'm trying to get this. Find him a house, man. Find him right, a house. Right. So that's what I'm trying Start to do. Start beating that payment. Get it, get someone in there, and then also get him into some and, and, and make it a win win all the way around. So, especially if they got a down payment, you can make anything happen, man. This creative stuff just opens up so many doors. And the answer, uh, who is that? Home ticks. Uh, this is not a lease option in Texas. Texas, they kind of funny with those lease options there. This will have to be a seller finance wrap type of deal, some type of a uh, wrap or maybe a contract for deed. I don't know. Different states have different ways of doing it, but it's, it's basically would be something other than a lease option. And let, you could do a lease option, but like I said, I'm not an expert in Texas, so I don't speak on it. Uh, if you do want to give it somebody who is an expert with a give a house buying Brian, he's down there in Texas doing these creative deals right. all the time. Okay. And he'll, uh, yeah, he he can hook you up down there. Got other than that, any other questions, bro? Nah, that's that's pretty much it, man. Like I like I said, I pretty much had an insight on what I needed to do. I just want to talk to someone who who's out here crushing it. Like I say, I just started watching you over two weeks ago, and and I pretty much like I like your content. So I just Ooh. thought I'd reach out to you and uh see where we can go from here, and I will keep you informed. Yeah, yeah. Let me know how I go. You get stuck with anything? Let me know, and uh, I definitely help you out. All right. Appreciate you, man. You have a good one. You too. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So that's uh, so like it's not going to be a lease option. It would probably be some type of a uh, creative type deal. Not in there, but in the state of Missouri, I'm locking that bad boy up, putting it out on a lease option, getting me a down payment, skid marks to the closing table. So that's real easy. Real easy, just like that. So that's what I would do on something like that. Any more questions, comments, concerns before we get up out of here and do some more woke stuff? Thanks for those hearts, by the way. Anybody that's watching this, be sure to share it out. Please share. Share if you care. Like it. 
subscribe, follow, depending on where you're watching, because it'll probably be on a replay on YouTube. That's going to do it. That's going to do it. All right. Boom. All right, family. So like I say, follow me on all social media outlets at Chris Monroe STL. That's Snapchat, that's Twitter, that's Instagram, that's Facebook and YouTube. The YouTube channel has over 100 free, I said it, 100 free real estate training videos. Check it out. The link's in my bio. Uh, the link's in the description. So check that out. So with all that being said, do what you do. Be who you be. And I'll see you before you see me. <laughs>